this is quite an amazing hearing that is happening, the IRS scandal hearing. We have uh, coverage happening on The Blaze. And um, can we get the audio for the radio? We're trying to get the audio now for radio because we've decided to join this because it is staggering. really... It is staggering. The clear wording of the statute. This is... Um, we would not be having to deal today with selective... Lloyd Dodgett, where's he from? Democrat, Texas, 35th District, Austin, San Antonio. And I hope that that petition is honored... IRS hearing right now about the big scandal. ...as I believe you have fulfilled your responsibilities, Mr. George. These Democrat uh, questions are brutal. General. Thank you for your <laughs> I think you're wonderful, and I think you're more you than wonderful. You have told us that there was nothing going on, Thank and we you. believe you. Uh, I think I'm in love with you, Robert. and uh, I wouldn't mind uh, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, sleeping with you later on today. Here we go, no one. Um, targeting, but it's used in the IG report 16 times. So <laughs> no, they're saying, uh, that's they're a saying common they're, understanding of the word. And they're so saying that the targeting is a harsh a word, and we didn't target anybody. Can you imagine if this was about gays? Jonah Goldberg just brought this up. This is about gays or women or anything like that. What, what people would say. Would you think if they said that you were targeting civil rights organizations? Yeah. They would never say that that's too harsh of a word. No. And they were saying targeting was too harsh, and the, the, the report itself used targeting 16 times was the yeah. one he was making there. Now that we had responded we in writing and everything was done, did it make sense for us to start talking about this in public? Can you walk me through the logic that animated in your mind at that time where you thought it would be a good idea to make a public disclosure to the American Bar Association rather than coming and following up on your duty to dis disclose that to the wow. House? So we were going to do it at the same time, I believe. Our intent was to talk mm -hmm. to you all at the same time. But that didn't happen, did it? Um, I, it did not happen, I don't believe. What other don't recollection believe. do you have or what other experience did you have when you were talking with Ms. Lerner about this scheme to have the planted question at the ABA? I'm not sure what you're asking, sir. I'm asking what's your recollection of that conversation? We talked about what would be said and, and how we might do it. Where did the conversation take place? I believe it was over the phone. What day did the conversation take place? I'd have to look back at my notes on that, sir. You've got notes on that? <laughs> I'd have to try to find them. I'm not Why did you say it. you had notes if you don't think you have notes? <laughs> nice. Sir, Thank please. You. Please what? I Thank please. you. <laughs> do you have notes or don't you have notes? I don't know. You don't wow. know? That you have notes? is gears. amazing. Um, he just caught this him in a lie. A this guy, this is really bad. Just this is caught him really in a lie. not going to go good for the president. This is really, this is a bloodbath. On the question as to whether you... This is uh, Peter Roskam of uh, Illinois. Idea of, ...does the committee have the right to know this information? And then you sort of sheltered yourself in this idea of, well, I've always told the truth. Let's set that aside for a moment. Now, you're a lawyer and I'm a lawyer. You know that in the process of discovery, Mr. Miller, that when you find subsequent information, counsel has a duty to disclose that to the opposite party. There is no Perry Mason moments. There is no gotcha moments. There is no litigious situation where somebody comes in and says, oh, we are just showing up, Your Honor, with this information and we haven't disclosed it to the other side. Don't you acknowledge that you had a duty, based on your testimony before this committee, of what your actual knowledge was? Mm. Didn't you have a duty, Mr. Miller, to come forward and disclose that to the committee based on all this cascading inquiries that had happened from the Ways and Means Committee directed to you? So I don't believe so, sir. I, what was happening was uh, I was in possession of some facts, was not possession of all facts, we had done an internal review to see what we needed to do to get these cases moving because, again, the processing was bad, the listing was bad. Those are two different pieces we were dealing with. Unbelievable. You know, was in at exactly you know what's incredible the is we, we now have them admitting to also that they did plant this question. And, uh, Why would you plant that question? Why would you want someone to stand up and say, hey, what about this? And you're answering in front of the American Bar Association. Instead of just going to the president, and because the president found out about it in the newspaper, mm -hmm. they actually discussed about giving it as a question, and they planted the question. The totality of the information that you're describing today, you had it all in your possession at the time at which you were under a scheme with Ms. Lerner to go and do a planted question. Is that right? I sort of object to the term scheme. We had the information. We but were reaching out to the and understanding the uh, a, a written or not written down 
uh, <laughs> we contemplated were reaching out to the play, a manipulation, call it what you will. You had all of the information, isn't that right? We were reaching out to the committee at the same time. Uh, well, what form did that outreach take? We called to try to get on the calendar. You called to try and get on the calendar. <laughs> Is that all you got? It's the truth. That's great. Okay. You know, I find it incredibly ironic. <clears throat> you know, on the one, one hand, you're arguing today that the IRS is not corrupt. But the subtext of that is you're saying, look, we're just incompetent. <laughs> and I think it's, it, is a, mm. it is a perilous pathway nice. to go down. This guy is great. There's, a, there's, there's sort of this notion that, yep. that hasn't been satisfactorily answered, and that is if the targeting wasn't targeting, if the targeting wasn't based on philosophy, how come only conservatives got snagged? Thank you. They Thank didn't, sir. you. They didn't. Organizations from all walks and all persuasions in numbers were pulled in. The point we've made many That's times. That's shown by the fact that only 70 of the 300 organizations were Tea Party organizations of the ones that were looked <laughs> by Tig <laughs> <laughs> Right, and the other rest of them were 912. <laughs> is in contradiction to the IG testimony. I yield All right. back. Time has expired. Mr. Thompson's recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, the, the fact, fact that they that looked at one or two other liberal and, uh, groups in the middle of all of that is mm -hmm. not the point. It's in numbers, and that's the line they're trying to walk uh, right. More important, I want to make sure, or as important, I want to make sure that we were able to do all that we can to prevent it from uh, ever happening again uh, for all the same reasons that many of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle uh, uh, mentioned today. Uh, and I want to associate myself with the uh, outrageous and intolerable group uh, as to where I think uh, this uh, this ranks. Uh, what, what I would like to it's know, a Democrat um, from California, Lawrence, Mike Thompson. Uh, first, in your uh, testimony, you had a, a section that is titled "Results of Review," where you say the IRS used inappropriate criteria for identifying uh, these uh, organizations. Is that legal? It's. Hmm. Is it legal? <laughs> <laughs> it is. I'm trying to get a sense of what uh, it, it inappropriate not, it, criteria means. It is not illegal, sir, okay. but it was unusual. So, uh, and then you uh, enumerate them. In, inappropriate criteria, criteria were developed and stayed in place for a total of more than 18 months. Is Correct. that illegal? It is not illegal, but it was inappropriate. I understand that. I'm just trying to get a sense of... And sir, uh, if I may, it's contrary to Treasury regulations and other policies then in place. But it's by not the illegal. I understand. Uh, it's the like substantial our, it's delays, like our taxes are voluntary. Yeah. Or inappropriate. Uh, it's inappropriate. And then the third, the unnecessary information, uh, illegal or inappropriate? I inappropriate. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, probing questions. You there. Also no, it is because what they're doing, what he's doing is he's saying, I want to make sure this everybody understands. What the administration did was not illegal; it was just inappropriate. Right? Oh yeah, that's what the, why they're doing it. Right. It's a it's a softball question for yeah. this guy, and he could barely answer it. It is to get it on the record. Yep. It's to get it on the record. There is no illegals anything going on here. There is no impeachment coming because nothing was illegal. This is Cass Sunstein. This is why regulation is so bad. Because regulation, your health care regulation, your business regulation, they can, if they don't like you, they can put you out of business. Because all they have to do is just keep tying you up. It is the reason why this studio that I'm sitting in here in New York, it took me a year, a year to build these facilities. And so, you know, these studios were already in this building, this actual box was already inside of the box of this building. These are soundproof rooms. So these were already soundproof rooms. All I had to do was wire them and put some lights in and uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's all I had to do. It took me a year to put this building uh, online for Mercury. We were working off onto the side. Remember that? Oh, yeah. For a year. It took me six weeks to put a high-definition studio online from scratch in Texas. Yep. Th that's all regulation. That's all regulation. And that's how you bankrupt businesses. That's how you bankrupt um, uh, organizations. That's how you get people to sit down and be quiet. You don't do anything illegal. You hassle them. If we are really at a point, I mean, it's the spirit.
of the thing. If we have to have written down every possible way, you can't, there's no tax code that can contain it. That's why individuals have to be good. This is really why a character matters. Because when you have this much power and you give them more power and you give them room, if they have no character, they're not breaking the law. Officer, I never, I never touched him once. How many movies have we seen from when somebody, you know, a Nelson Mandela movie where the bad guys are like, hey, I didn't do anything wrong at all here. And they walk away because they didn't do anything wrong. It's funny, too. There's no regulation that says you have to have a certain percent of females or a certain percent of minorities in a company. Yet, if you don't have the right amount, the government cracks down on big companies all the time for stuff like that. Yet here, there are rules about it. And the fact that they just came out and, and, and completely ignored them, well, that's just inappropriate. Go back out of the uh, hearings here for a second. Yeah, Stephen Miller speaking, superstar slime ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think what we're realizing uh, here is, George, is he is really a not a good guy. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going you know to take a quick break because I want to hear the Republicans questions. I don't want to hear the, all the setups of everything else. Yeah. Um, this is uh, an amazing thing. Go ahead and uh, uh, bring the audio up. This is information you indicated on the record that you were aware of that news. This is a Republican from so Pennsylvania. Did, on that story, any other story, did you talk or communicate with anybody outside of the IRS in Treasury about that issue? I don't know. I don't believe so, though. Okay. Will you check all of your records, all of your notes, can... all of your emails to get back to this committee about whether your answer is different than what you're providing right now? Yeah, but what I can say again is, well, I have a limited time. All right. From... Time is expiring, has expired at this point. So why don't we move on to Mr. Kind. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. And thank now, you is this his real name or is this just because he's a Democrat? They're calling him now Mr. Kind. I assume you agree with the premise that if there is a agency in the federal government that just needs to be above reproach and no hint of bias, partisanship, ill treatment, mistreatment, unequal treatment to any individual or any organization, it is the IRS. Is that right? I agree, sir, and that's well, what's uh, that sad about this. And, and obviously the optics of Congress what happened there in the Cincinnati mm, office and reviewing the, the applications, House. this is what comes from it. Is that right? The perception is, is bad. It's my right? understanding, too, that based on the Inspector General's report and the recommendations that the IRS has taken that up and is trying to do their best to implement that to ensure that this does not happen in the future again? We will implement all recommendations and it will not happen again. Mr. Oh. Neal asked oh, okay. previously in his line of questioning about the Buying accountability, well, who's being held accountable and why in that. Obviously, you've rendered your, res- your, your resignation to the president and he's accepted that as commissioner of IRS. Is that right? I have uh, I have uh, done so to the to the secretary. Okay. And uh, any other instances of accountability uh, as far as those uh, at the Cincinnati office, those in charge of the, the Cincinnati, Cincinnati office, office. The development and the use of this criteria? So I think I mentioned that there were two instances in which uh, there was uh, there was counseling suggested and there was a reassignment of someone. Counseling what I say and reassignment. In my opening statement Ooh, is we vicious. now have possession of the facts. With respect to the TIGDA report, now is the time we should be looking at that. Is there Once any, we have the facts. any pushback from the IRS with the Inspector General's report and some of the recommendations that they're making? Any difference of opinion? There's no error between us on the recommendations. Okay. Um, is there a role for the Congress to be working with the IRS to ensure that something like this does not happen <coughs> in the future? I'm thinking specifically of Post Citizens United and 70,000 applications that these that Democrat was, uh, questions submitted. are like the, a really and, crappy and scene in a, a good movie. Line. Like they just screech it to a halt. Dude, yeah. Yeah. Oh, these Democrat questions yeah. are. Uh, let me ask. Um, okay, so you robbed a bank. Yes, I did. Um, and uh, and you were there. Well, I don't remember if I was there or not. But will you do it again? Members of no. my team were there. Um, all right. Did but you saw that your team was in robbing the bank? Yes. And you're going to uh, you're going to implement all those things that uh, will keep you guys out of the bank. Yeah, my whole team is there. Like, we're just mm-hmm. I've got one of them in counseling right now. We're so sorry. And one uh, of them's been reassigned to a whole different banking yeah, district. Yeah, there's no there's he's definitely not going to do it again because he's yeah. been re- reassigned. And uh, and I've got another guy who's like I want to continue to ri- r- rob the bank, and we're we have him in counseling. <laughs> But we are definitely going to make sure that those bank bars on the windows, those are in tip-top shape. And uh, yeah. we're good. We're good to go here. I mean, it's, it's really... It's that bad. It's that With bad. With the Democrats, it's, it's that bad.